If you're like a lot of people, you may have thought about completely ditching your cable or satellite company. There are a lot of reasons you might want to do this, sick of high costs or contracts, don't really watch that much TV anyways, or just hate being jerked around by notoriously bad customer service. That last point is the main reason I decided to ditch DirecTV and look for some other options. I won't go into all the details of my personal experience, but only to say that when I was using DirecTV, I considered them the best in class in terms of the cable box, menu guides, and picture quality, but I got tired of having to call every few months and waste time haggling with the customer service agents for the best price. Plus, having to schedule half a day to have someone come out and set up your cable or satellite service is more inconvenient than I'm willing to put up with, not to mention the horrors of cable boxes and their remotes. So when I finally moved, I decided to explore some other options. So in this video, I wanted to take you through a comparison of three of these inexpensive TV streaming apps, the Sling TV, DirecTV Now, and PS View, to give you my impressions from using them and hopefully give you all the information you need to decide if it's right for you. So the first thing you want to do is decide what kind of media streamer box you want to go with. And there's a lot of options out there for that. You can go with something like an Android TV powered device, like an Nvidia Shield. There's the Amazon Fire TV or Fire Stick. You know, you can go with uh, Apple TV or like a Roku box. And for me, I had a couple specific requirements. One was that because we already have iOS devices, wanted to be able to quickly throw up anything on the screen we were in front of, whatever we were looking at on our phones, to be able to share the video or the picture just really easily. Um, and then the other thing is I wanted a consistent user experience across all my different TVs. So, you know, I didn't want a Roku box in one room and then like another box in another room, Apple TV in the bedroom. And it's just all confusing with all different remotes and different... Um, UIs on the different apps. So I wanted a consistent experience there. And so I ended up choosing uh, the Apple TV to go with. So it's not, I'm not going to really review streamer boxes, but that's just to let you know why I chose this one. So I ended up getting three. I got one up here with the projector. I got one in the living room and then one in the TV in my bedroom. And that's all the three TVs I have in my house. And then the other side benefit with the Apple TV, there's huge app support. So anything you could ultimately want to do with the streamer box, you're going to pretty much be able to do with the Apple TV. Um, so I thought that support's kind of nice. And incidentally, one of the things I use it for is when we're, say, on the couch and we're using our laptops researching a, a vacation or something like that, it's nice to be able to throw whatever we're looking at and so we can get it up on the screen in front of us and just kind of discuss it that way. So it makes it kind of like just an added bonus. The next thing to consider is the channel lineup and pricing. If you happen to be someone who watches a lot of different channels, you might end up spending near as much as just going with a traditional cable provider to begin with. For me, I just wanted some basic TV for much less than I would pay for traditional cable. So in this regard, Sling offers the cheapest minimal option, as you can get a nice little package of TV channels for only 20 bucks a month, going up to 40, with optional add-on packs for things like sports or kids channels like Disney, premium channels like HBO, and then a lot of different international options. DirecTV Now offers four different plans ranging from $35 to $70 a month, while PSView has four packages ranging from $30 to $65 a month. I'm not going to get into the channel options in detail because everyone has different requirements, but just as an example, none of PS View's options include Bloomberg or Viceland, while it's in both of DirecTV's and Sling TV's packages. Point being that choosing a package really just comes down to personal preference and knowing what you can and can't live without, and whether or not you can supplement your favorite missing channel directly with their channel's own app. Finally, think about how much you care about the major local network channels like ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. This is because none of the streaming TV providers offer all of them at the same time, except for in a very few select markets. If you like any of the popular shows or major sports or big events like the Grammys, which are mainly on these channels, then the best way to supplement that is to get a cheap HD TV antenna, which is what I did. And the fact that these networks don't just offer their content for free on all these devices and apps, when you can essentially get their channels for free over the air anyway, is pretty stupid in my opinion. All right, so just wanted to briefly demo the three different streaming apps I have available. The first one I'm going to do is Sling TV because this is the one I've been using the longest. I've been using it for about six months and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you can see there's a lot of different stuff going on and it takes some getting used to because it's not your typical guide, uh, at least not what we're used to with a regular like cable box. But you can see here it has my TV and then my channels. So my channels is just your favorite channels which you can adjust by going over here to the edit function and it will have all your channels that's available with your package and you just select them by either green mark checking them or not. And so it's easy enough and then they show there across the top. The main one I use is here this guide section. But you can see as soon as you pick a channel, it will just have the schedule across the first row there of what the shows are coming up. And then at the bottom will be all the different on demand uh, shows that that particular channel offers. And then some channels will let you rewind a little bit, some won't, like for example, if we go into Bloomberg, all the way in the end. You'll be able to pause, fast forward, rewind, anything you want to do in here pretty much. You just can't obviously record. And the way that you know it is with this resume 
playing or watch live or start from beginning, these options will show. And when that shows, then you'll be able to see here, if you notice at the bottom, you know, I can just pause this, slide over. So now you can fast forward um, and kind of just jump around. Every click on, on the remote here jumps forward and backwards 10 or 30 seconds, back 10 seconds or forward 30 seconds. So, but like I say, that really all depends on the channel. It's, it's, it's really hit and miss. Just the overall guide in general definitely took some getting used to, uh, but I'm pretty comfortable with it now. And You can see you can navigate channels while you're still watching a channel just by swiping up from the bottom. The channel changing is pretty responsive too. It happens pretty quick. Uh, once in a while you will get the load circle, but it's not too bad. You know, if you just want some basic channels, it works really good. Like I say, I pay 25 bucks for their middle package and it gives me most of these channels that I'll tend to watch. And it just gives me some options if I just want to watch some TV. So that's just a quick overview of the general operation of the Sling TV app. I'll get into some of the other cons and limitations towards the end of the video. But overall, it works pretty good. So the next app I want to show you is the Direct TV Now. And just to give you a quick summary of Direct TV Now, to me, they have the best guide because it's the most traditional. So you can see here from top to bottom, it has alphabetical channels. And then going out to the right has all the upcoming programming. And then the blue vertical line is what time it's at. And you can also switch channels just by sliding over to the right or left, at least on the Apple TV remote. And that's kind of one way. It's more like a traditional changing channel with a typical cable box. You can also favor all the channels so you can just, um, you know, isolate just the channels you like to watch, which is the way I like to do it, just to kind of see what's on without flipping through a bunch of channels I don't care about. The main thing I don't like about the Direct TV Now app is when you go to watch something on their video on demand service. Let's go to one of these networks here. Uh, let's say BBC. And you go to 24 hours on earth, so let's watch this. So this is a, a on demand. But on their on demand shows, you can see it pops up these icons at the bottom, play, and then you have to slide over to go fast forward. And you can hit two times, four times, eight times, 16 times. And then you have to kind of go back. It's just an awkward, I can never get it. I can never get it right. The point is it doesn't use the normal Apple TV, uh, TVOS um, human interface guidelines that all the other apps use. So you're supposed to be able to just tap on this corner or on the right edge or left edge. And it's supposed to fast forward or rewind just like Sling TV does and just like PlayStation TV. But this wants to let you make you go down and select the actual forward icon, tap it to forward. And you can see it's just slow and it's awkward. The picture quality is very similar to Sling TV, almost no difference, I would say. They say that the DVR capability is gonna be coming soon, so we'll have to wait, um, but it looks like they're gonna still implement it the way they do with the icons at the bottom, and to me, that's just a deal breaker. The huge advantage is being able to pause every channel, and then their guide is really nice. So if you can get over the little DVR aspects being a little funky, then they're a pretty good option, although they are the most expensive. Uh, so that's DirecTV now. So PlayStation View is pretty nice. Actually, it has the best picture quality of the three. Um, it has a little bit, it offers a little bit higher uh, frames per second. That's obvious, you can tell in sports if you like that look. But my main problem with PS View is it didn't offer the two of the channels I watch the most, which are Bloomberg TV and Viceland. And as I was mentioning earlier, you can obviously supplement it by getting the individual apps, like you can see here. But to me, there's just a certain niceness with being able to go into a single app and it has all the channels you mainly watch. And then it has this thing right in the beginning where I have to select my profile every single time, just like Netflix. I just want to launch the app and be able to use it. If there's one person, why are you making me select this every time? You know, I can understand if there's multiple profiles, but if there's one profile, just go into it and let me use it. <laughs> Anyways, here's the home guide you can see. It has the you're watching, recently watched, it has uh, my shows that you favor, and then you can go to live TV and see what's on. Um, you have your favorited channels. You know, it's it's pretty much all the same. I, I, like I said, the picture quality is better. And as far as their guide, you see a red line going across. That's what time it is. But this is a little bit backwards, in my opinion. To put the channels across the top and the time across the left. Uh, it's something you can get used to, uh, for sure. So it's not that huge of a deal. To me, it's more that it didn't have the channels tend to watch but you can see you favorite so in the guide it puts your favorites first on the left in alphabetical order then after you get through all your hearted channels then you can see it has the regular guide going across so 
again, you know, no local channels. It has, ABC, it has some local channels, Fox and uh, CBS, which is nice. It's the only one that offers CBS uh, within their package. Because if you pay for CBS uh, separately as an app, I think it's five or six bucks a month to get live TV. And, you know, if you're into NFL and stuff. And PlayStation includes that in all their channel packages. So it saves you a little bit of money there if you like CBS anyway. And then here's how the fast forward and rewinding works on uh, PS View. You can see it's the same thing. Every click is 10 seconds. Well, there, stop there because I'm only playing this for like 20 seconds, but yeah, you can see it jumps around pretty quick and then eventually stops. You can tap it and slide over, but only to back as far as when you were watching the program. So that's other downfall of PS View. The PS View is you can only really skip around as far as you've been watching it. Whereas, uh, like I was mentioning on Sling TV, certain shows will actually let you jump around within the show if it offers it so it, it's weird it's all the apps aren't really consistent and even within channels not consistent on direct tv you can't skip around on bloomberg but on sling you can so i don't know why there's not consistency across the providers but when it comes to the playstation view you you can pause all the channels or every channel just like you can on direct tv but it will only pause it for like a minute or two and then it will start playing and you can't rewind it back very far. You can only rewind it back up to five minutes. So again, it's really only just temporary pauses and doesn't really work exactly like your typical DVRs would. You can save shows to your My Cloud, but here you can see it's also limited depending on shows. So again, it's just hit or miss. And I wouldn't really rely on DVR capabilities as any of my deciding factors in choosing one of these three. So I hope that gave you a good overview of the three different services. I think they're all pretty decent options as far as low price cable replacements, but there are trade-offs. None of them are as good as picture quality as you can get with DirecTV Satellite. As far as I know, none of them currently offer a 5.1 audio stream, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, for me, the picture quality is acceptable, even blowing up on a 120 inch screen, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that I don't have high expectations for, ca for, ca you know, for cable TV anyway, given how much they usually compress their signal, especially compared to a true 1080p source. You know, occasionally I did also experience some minor buffering issues here and there on all on all three apps, and the lack of true DVR abilities or consistent time shifting definitely took some getting used to. I do take solace in the fact that my cable bill is only 25 bucks a month, though, and I can stop the service anytime with just a couple clicks. There's also device limitations to think about. DirecTV only gives you two active device streams at a time. Uh, PS View will give you up to five, and Sling TV just three, which this can obviously become an issue if you have a bigger household and tons of devices. Um, all three do also give you the ability to watch and stream their services via apps on mobile devices, but only PS View and DirecTV offer viewing through a web browser. Internet data caps can also be an issue. I personally have one terabyte per month data cap limit with Xfinity, and I've learned that these streaming services can chew that limit up pretty fast. You know, if you take a five megabit per second data rate, you'd be using a little over two gigs of data per hour per device. So it's certainly something to keep in mind. And, and currently Sling TV is the only one that lets you set the data rate. In the end, making the switch completely to a streaming service isn't something I'd necessarily recommend unless you're really trying to cut your cable bill hard or just don't watch that much regular TV. And hopefully these services do get better over time with more competitors like Hulu coming up. In any event, I do love using the Apple TV as the main hub for all my video content, but that is a topic for another video. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching y'all. You guys take care.